Let's talk about quantum probability and logic, which are the core of the quantum approach. So what does it mean when we say we want to quantize economics? Well, it doesn't mean that we're, we're emulating or you know, somehow abusing quantum physics. Quantum mathematics is about information and probabilities and observables and how they relate to each other, as Scott Aronson said. And money is a form of information that does not behave like a classical object. Now, when we uh, try to apply quantum ideas to areas outside of physics, we encounter a lot of obstacles. One, one is that uh, we've constantly been told that, you know, by famous physicists and mathematicians that quantum mechanics is fundamentally incomprehensible. So we'll never really understand it. Uh, we have these weird phenomena like Schrodinger's cat, which can be alive or dead at the same time. Uh, we're often told that these concepts, such as superposition and entanglement, only apply to the tiniest quantum particles, and you'll never encounter them in your everyday life. And then finally, there's this impenetrable mathematics. But let's just forget physics for the time being, and think of something much simpler, like a coin toss. So if we wanted to model the state of a coin toss, where we don't know the outcome. There, so there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, so we would want a two-dimensional space. And we could represent the state of the coin if it was a balanced coin with a diagonal line like this one. And that sort of balance between the two states. And this is really the idea of quantum probability. So uh, we can represent heads as a up arrow, and these brackets are the Dirac notation, which is used in quantum mechanics, or as a, uh, uh, a vector, one zero. And tails can be a down arrow, or it can be a vector zero, one. And our superposed state is a mix of these two, a balanced mix of up or down. And in order to get the probabilities, we'll just take the projections so this is the projection on the horizontal axis is going to give the, uh, when we square that, that's going to give the probability of heads and the probability of tails is going to be the projection onto the vertical axis. And why are we squaring them? Well, because we want the projections to always add to one. And by the Pythagorean theorem, uh, that will be the case. So the basic difference between classical probability is that and quantum is that classical uses a what's called the one norm, so the options are heads or tails. Quantum uses this two norm, it involves the square of, in order to take the norm, and you get this superposition state, which is kind of a mix of heads and tails. So switching, making this change from a one norm to a two norm leads to all these different quantum uh, concepts such as superposition, which we've seen, negative probability, interference, and entanglement. So what does it mean negative probability? Well, if we just uh, sort of flip our state over, then now we've got a negative probability for heads. The size of the probability, when we take the norm, we're squaring it, so that's obviously positive again. So nothing has really changed except that when we add probabilities together, we can get a plus and a minus and canceling out. These are called interference effects. And we can also think of more complicated systems. So imagine that we had two coins. Now there's four different things that we need to keep track of. There's heads and tails for one coin, heads and tails for another coin. That's four dimensions, obviously not easy to draw. Uh, but quantum coins can be entangled. So for example, you might have the only possibility is heads, heads, or tails, tails. So what this means is that just by making this switch from a one norm to a two norm, we're allowing all of these quantum phenomena, such as superposition, interference, entanglement, and so on.